most information on the internet with regards to parsing is wrong. And when I was a noob programmer, I used to think that parsing was super hard, but I'm here to tell you that it's actually easy. If you know the sort of secret way to do parsing, you realize it's not that difficult at all. So let's begin. Parsing basics for noobs. I want to parse this expression, 4 times 5 plus 6. What is it equal to? How would we do that? I'm going to describe the algorithm. Okay, we break our expression up into what are called tokens, which tokens really just means like it's either a number or it's a math symbol. We start with, we have this variable called the accumulator where we're going to be sort of accumulating our result. And then we're going to move from left to right through these tokens. So first we see the token four. We go, ah, you know, the four means four, right? That's not that hard. Okay, so we put four into the accumulator. And then we consume this token. So, you know, we're done with this. We move on, we see a times. Okay, great. I can, I know what times means, but times what? We look at the next token, we see, ah, it's times five. Great. Well, that means we just do four, we just multiply the accumulator by five. We get 20. Great. So now we could consume that, set the accumulator to 20. We move on. What is the next token? It's token plus. Well, plus what? Plus six. Okay, great. And then we do plus six on the accumulator. We get 26. Tokens consumed. Now we've run out of tokens, which means that the accumulator holds our result. Great. The answer is 26. But we will make the mistake here with order of operations, which you will remember from middle school as BEDMAS or PEMDAS, depending on where you learnt. Let's look at why. In the expression we just went through, 4 times 5 plus 6, we basically we do the 4 times 5 first, and then we do the plus 6, and we get the correct answer, 26. But if it was 4 plus 5 times 6, well, then we'll end up doing the 4 plus 5 first instead of the times 6, which will give us the wrong answer. This should be 34, but we actually will get 54 because of our sort of left to right scan method. So now I will go through a different, um, a different uh, method that uses recursion instead. But first, what is the problem here? The problem is precedence. Okay, and precedence, well, this is a term, this is the term you'll hear thrown around in computer science programmer circles as the problems. What does precedence mean? Well, precedence comes from the verb to precede, which comes from the Latin word prae and cero, which means to go before. And so precedence really which just means which one goes first, right? Should we do this guy first or should we do this guy first? Which one should we do first? So let's start off here with our, you know, we're going to solve this problem, but using the recursive method instead, and we'll see how that's different. Uh, recursion, you can look up online because, you know, diff part, the resources on parsing are absolutely disastrously bad, but all the online resources for recursion are actually pretty good. So you can just learn about recursion with a simple Google search. Now, what we're going to do, we start off as before, we look at the first token, we see it's four. Okay, we're going to save that in a variable here called L for the left side. Great, now we see the token plus and we know, oh, we're going to do plus, but what are we going to be plusing? Well, here we recurse down. We say, we don't know what the right side is of this plus, but we save what we're doing and then we recurse down. Okay, so we call the procedure function again. And we say, okay, I, ha I have five. Great. Let's do the same thing. We store five as the left side. And then I see times. Okay, what, what are we timesing with? I don't know. Again, we recurse. We go down and we see at the lowest level here, we have six. The left side is six. And now we've run out of tokens. So we know what six means. Six is just six, right? That now we can return this up to the previous function. So we return the right is now six. We can go up 
Okay, we're timesing. We're timesing five by six, right? Because this this is the left side. This is the right side. So great, we know that this is thirty. And then we can we can return that up. We know that the right side of this plus will be thirty now. So we can pop the stack, go up, and now we have oh we have plus. We're plusing four and thirty, and of course that's thirty four. Now we get the correct result here. We we um, do the five times six first, and then we do the plus four. So we this is correct. The original problem we get incorrect because now we're doing five plus six before we do four or times four. And so we get the wrong result here. Now, the secret to passing is that this is all you need. These two techniques is you either loop sort of left to right or you recurse. And you have to mix them. We'll talk about that next. I'm going to introduce this concept, concept of precedence values, which sounds complicated, maybe. But really, that just means sort of which one has higher, priori higher priority of the operations. And so we have multiply, divide. We'll have a precedence of 2 and add or subtract or precedence of 1. This just means, like in the original BEDMAS and PEMDAS, that you should do multiplications before you do subtractions. It's a higher precedence value because it what was to go before the one with a lower value. It precedes it. Okay, so on the first one, the loop method was correct, right? Because we did four times five and then plus six. And for the second example, we the recursion was correct because we did five times six and then we did plus four. And so we can see here that in the first example, precedence is going down because we start out with two, which is a higher precedence than one. And in the other example, we start out with plus, which has a precedence of one, and then multiply, which has a precedence of two. And the thing to recognize is that when precedence increases, so it goes up, say, from one to two, we should be recursing. We're using the recursive method. When precedence goes down or stays the same, we use the loop method. Let's take a look at that. So we have this bigger example. 2 times 3 plus 7 plus 8 times 4. Okay, and I've listed out the precedences here. Multiply has a precedence value of 2 plus a precedence value of 1, 1, and then 2 for the multiply. And then we're going to go through and see how we can mix these methods. So we start out with, we just see the value 2 here. Okay. Then we see this multiply and we do more times 3, right? Times 3. And then we do plus, plus 7 here, plus 7. And then we're, we, we're going to do a plus. But now precedence is increasing. So here precedence went down. Here precedence was the same. So we're just doing our loop thing where we, you know, do 2 times 3. And then uh, the result of that would be 6. So 6 plus 7. And then plus. But here, this guy has a higher precedence. Precedence is going up. So now we recurse. So we, in our loop code, we save what the value was here. That would have been uh, exactly 2 times 3, 6 plus 7. That would have been 13. So we're saving our 13. And then we recurse down. So we say, okay, you know, I see times. I see, in fact, 8 times. 8 times what? Well, and then we recurse down again, and we see 4. Okay, and then now we have the correct thing here. We Because we do the 8 times 4 first, and we get 32. And then we can do 32 plus uh, 13 and get the correct answer, which would be 45, I believe. Yeah. So the, the thing to realize here is that, you know, the way you structure this actually is you write your code for the loop section for the for the loop case that I went through in the beginning of the video. And then what you want to do is each time you want to look at what the right side of the expression is, 
you call your recursive function, which is actually the function with the loop in it, right? So you have an ability to call yourself recursively and not, and you pass in as a parameter the previous precedence value you've seen. So this, you know, we start off with times three here, then that would call the function, um, you know, pass what is on the right side here, and it would pass the three, and then it would try to pass the plus, but then it would see, ah, the plus is uh, precedence one, and that's lower than uh, the precedence I was given in, which was times. And so it returns just three, okay? And so we get just three. Otherwise, and that's sort of what decides on, you know, had we grown out something bigger tree down here or not, is this guy returns early, even though there are more tokens. Okay, and then we just continue the loop. Same thing happens here. We don't, precedence is the same in this case, right? Because we have the plus here, plus seven. And then, you know, this guy says, oh, you know, I'm plus. The guy above me is also plus. So I, I will just return early. We, we, we return seven. Here, the same thing happens. If we get plus, we call the recursive function to pass the right side. It passes eight. And then this time it sees, it looks at the times and says, oh, at times is higher, uh, higher precedence level than the, the value above me. The, 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 pers the guy above me, what I got passed into me is level plus. And that's lower than what I have. And so I'm just going to go ahead and do times four myself instead of returning. Okay. This will seem a bit confusing. Um, this is the point where I sort of can't help you understand more. You just actually have to try go and implement this in, in the code. But, uh, you know, after some figuring out, if you can write the recursive method, um, so if you can do the loop method and the recursive method, try both of those, make sure you can do both of them, and then try to combine them in this way, you will see that passing is actually stupidly easy. You just call the right functions that do the right thing. And you look at, this is the secret, is that when precedence is going down or staying the same, you want to loop. And when precedence goes up, you want to recurse. That is all there is to passing. Okay, good luck programming, and I'll see you in the next video.